Hi, welcome to episode 403 of the Corner of Knit and Tea. My name is Laura. I'm also known as Fluffy Kira on Instagram and Twitter. I blog over at the corner of knitandtea.com, and that's where this episode and every episode show notes will be. And I sell my hand spun yarns in my Etsy shop, also called the Corner of Knit and Tea. Hi, how are you? It is Monday, December 12th. I cannot believe we are already almost halfway through December. Goodness, the month is flying by. I hope that you are having a great month. Um, I am crafting a ton and am finding inspiration in all kinds of things. I'm mostly working on getting whips out the door, but I do have a few new things that I will share with you for various reasons. Um, and I uh, have some other interesting crafty things to share with you um, throughout the podcast today. So I hope that you are doing well. And let's go ahead and chat. It is a dreary day here just outside of Kansas City. Um, it is in the, I think, high 30s, and it's just kind of overcast, so I am enjoying tea. Um, I'm keeping on my roll of finishing off a tea a week. Um, I don't know how long I'll be able to keep that up, but I am finishing off Lemon Pound Cake from David's Teas. This was bought quite a long time ago. I meant to look up and see whether they still have it. If they do, I will put a link in the show notes. Um, if not, I'm sure you can find something similar or suitable. Um, this has, um, it's kind of a buttery lemon flavor, and it has oolong lemon grass, lemon peel, sunflower blossom, white hibiscus, um, natural and artificial pound cake, and lemon flavors. So um, David's Tea makes some nice teas, although I will tell you that they are not 100% um, natural ingredients. I do notice that they put in some sweeteners and some artificial flavors. Um, so if that bothers you, they may not be for you, um, but they do have some really, really nice flavors. So I'm drinking that in my roastery enamel mug, which of course is a coffee mug, but it's okay. That one is really, really good. I hope actually they have more because even though I should not be buying tea because I have boxes and boxes and boxes of tea, um, this is a particular favorite. I did really, really enjoy it. So I might see if they still carry it. So let's talk about the knits, which is the predominant focus of today's podcast based on what I have been working on this week. So I do have one finished object. I have talked to you about this twice. This is the Rachis or Rockus hat. It's R-A-C-H-I-S. And it is a pattern designed by the Wooly Wormhead. Um, and I love her hat designs. They are innovative and sometimes they're a little far out there even for me. Um, but this one is a really nice chevron pattern and it's great for variegated yarn. The pattern itself, um, the photo is kind of a gray yarn with some rainbow streaks through it. And so I knew that it would work okay for a variegated yarn. It would be too busy um, but it was enough of a pattern to keep things interesting it's just a chevron pattern you've got some eyelets you have some um uh, your, you know, your double decreases there, and then it's got a twisted rib brim. I knit mine a little bit longer than the pattern suggested, so it's a little bit slouchy, and I am waiting on a kind of coral pink um, pom-pom to go on top. I knit it out of DK weight yarn. Um, it is an MSC merino silk cashmere from, um, LL Yarn Co, who, full disclosure, they are a marketing client of mine, but I bought the yarn with my own money and really wanted to use it. This is their Under the Sea colorway, which is um, all kinds of teals and then kind of this, um, it, it goes across between like a ballet pink and then a little bit leaning towards coral. And then it's got some other um, pops of yellow and other, a little bit of brown, some of those kinds of spots in there. And the hat is super cute. Like I said, it's a little bit slouchy on me, um, but I think it's super cute. And then, like I said, I'm going to add a pom-pom and I got kind of a, um, it was called bubblegum, but it looks kind of coral. Um, and then it's got a little bit of black or brown at the edges. So I'm excited about that. I will take photos and post them on my Instagram when it comes. But that is just a super cute beanie um, that I really enjoyed whipping up kind of quickly. Um, I know I wasn't really going to cast on new things this month. Technically, I cast this on last month um, while I was on my Thanksgiving trip. And I just wanted to finish it up. So that is a hat for the coming winter. Um, and I really, really enjoyed that. And it blocked out just so soft and drapey and squishy. I really think um, this would be lovely for sweaters, um, but definitely spoil yourself with a skein. And I have, um, I don't know, it's not a full half skein left. I have maybe between 
well, probably between a third and a half. I haven't weighed it. Um, so I'll have to figure out if I can do some mitts or maybe a little cowl or um, what I'll do, or maybe I'll combine it with something else um, and make, make a hat for charity. So that's probably what will happen with this, but um, that is um, my first finished object this week. I guess technically it's my only finished object object this week. I am working on a bunch of other things um, that I'm excited about. So um, the first thing that I'm super, super excited about is I was working on my West Knits blanket and I did work on that quite a bit and I will show you. Um, but I decided to pull another um, another item out of hibernation. I have talked to you about this before, but I pulled my gnome out of hibernation. And this was the fall mystery gnome with Sarah Shira from Imagine Landscapes. And I am terrible because I did not pull the name of the pattern. Um, this was, oh, I know what it was. It's, it's the choose your own adventure gnome. Um, and the reason it's a choose your own adventure is because you could knit it in three weights of yarn that were like five different options for the hat, five different options for the body, three different options for the beard, options for the arms, all kinds of things. So you could basically design your own gnome. And I am really, really charmed. It is not done. Um, I still need to finish the beard. The beard is on the needles right now. It needs a nose and then it needs some arms and then it will be finished. But of course you can kind of get the overall shape, look, and feel. So for the hat, I used um, a pink gradient skein that I had spun a while ago. I guess I don't know whether it was fully a gradient skein or precisely what. I went ahead and um, spun it and it was my early spinning so there were imperfect parts of it that I cut out and of course the transitions between the gradient was not that great. Um, it looks like I think what I did is I spun it all through and then I chain plied it but it was in three separate skeins so I must have screwed up somewhere. Um, like I said I just wanted to use leftover hand spun for this one so I used a skein for the hat and then I had a couple skeins of um, leftover yarn that I had plied. If you've been with me for a long time and you would have to be for a really long time because this was very early podcast. When I started spinning um, I used to uh, divide my braids into two and oftentimes I wouldn't divide them evenly. So I would have lots of little bits left over and I collected all these bits on some bobbins and then I plied them together and I used to knit sort of scrappy, um, those little mitten ornaments out of them. And so I had the leftovers of maybe like a ball and a half um, of some of the leftovers from that. So this truly is scrappy yarn, even though it happens to have quite a bit of blues in there. Um, it was little bits of leftovers from all kinds of skeins. So, and you can see actually the more colorful part ended up on the bottom with the stripes. Um, but that is, that is what I used for this. And I just love how this little pink section here echoes the pink up above here. So I think it goes really nicely. And I have just a few little scraps left that I'm going to use for the arms. And they are actually going to determine, um, there are like a little bit wider arms and hands and then there are a little bit narrower arms and hands and so I think I'm gonna have to go with the narrower because um, that's what I have left but then it will totally match. So I'm actually really excited even though I used up lots of leftover bits and scraps from my stash. I don't know precisely how much. Um, I did go ahead and stuff him, um, him or her, I guess I don't know. Um, and I, uh, I did not follow her instructions in terms of weighting it. What I did do is you may be able to see down at the bottom, you can see it's kind of a rectangular shape here. I took a bit of cardboard from an Amazon box that we had gotten and I shoved that in there as I closed it up. So it's got a really, and I put all the stuffing above that. So it's basically got a really fat, flat base to sit on so that it will stand up. So I am absolutely charmed by this. It is not complete. I have all the other little bits to complete this week, um, but that's a really fun one. And this, the hat had been sitting done um, for a while. I did that in the fall and then I just didn't finish it. And so I wanted to go ahead and finish it. This was one of my three projects for finishing at the end of the year. I think I'm gonna end up finishing two and frogging one, um, which is fine with me. That was, I wanted to just get things off the needles. So I will put the finishing touches on this one and be able to share that with you next week. And then I think they're going to become my constant podcasting buddy and just hang out here with me on the couch. So, um, but I am just charmed every time I look at it, it makes me smile. Her designs are so whimsical and I just love having one of them. I know it's absolutely ridiculous um, and I still love it. So that is to come um, next week with a finish, but I got significantly, I did the whole body this week. So that was what I did there. 
So next on the needles that you have seen, I did work on the West Knits blanket. I'm actually mid row right now. Um, I looked at the pattern to kind of determine where I am and how close I am to finishing. And um, basically I am in the middle of the last repeat for finishing. So I basically have, um, I think four more stripes after this one to be finished with the um, complete, with the pattern as written. And this is the West Knits Painting Honeycombs blanket. Um, and I am doing the smaller size, which is basically considered a lapgan or a baby blanket and I believe the measurements are somewhere around 35 and 42 I think if I looked correctly if I'm remembering correctly but you can check out the pattern um, it does not appear to be quite that here uh, because I have not finished um, washing and blocking it and it will stretch out some with blocking and it's also like I said kind of tangled up on the needle right now so you can see down at the bottom well here let me go this way this is upside down but this is the full width so it's gonna be a nice lap blanket it's not gonna be huge um, and it will probably live behind me on the couch. It will probably replace one of these or just go on top of one of these. You can tell I like riotous blankets with lots of color. I am using Zen Yarn Gardens DK, um, which is 250 yards to 150 to 100 gram skein. And I am using five contrasting colors. This light one, um, it looks almost white in the video, at least on the monitor, but it is a petal pink. And then I've got a hot pink, I've got a turquoise, I've got a yellow and an orange. And then my main color, um, I think it's called Norway and it is like a dark teal. I have a lot of yarn left over and last week I talked about um, what I think I was going to do with that. What I have decided is I'm definitely going to knit one extra repeat beyond what the blanket suggests because I don't think that will change the shape fundamentally um, or by, by too much of a measurement. Then when I get done with that, I'm going to lay it out and see how I feel about it. I have quite a bit of yarn left over. I still have almost two full skeins of my main color and then I have lots left of the contrast colors. And what I can't decide is whether I wanna keep going or whether I wanna stop. Um, if I keep going, it's going to be very long, but not very wide. And so that was kind of my, am I going to create a really oddly shaped blanket that I'm not going to use? One of my friends suggested that maybe I just want to keep going and then I can use it kind of as an oversized wrap shawl blanket. I believe they call them schlankets. Um, and I, I, that idea has merit because I really would like to use up all of this gorgeous yarn um, because I have a lot left over. I mean, I have, like I said, I have almost two full skeins of this plus partial skeins of all of the other colors and I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with them. Part of me would love to do another project with them because these colors are so gorgeous together, but part of me also thinks I might as well just finish the project that I'm doing and make it oversized and then enjoy it all as one. So I think that's the direction I'm moving, in which case I am actually potentially not going to finish before the end of the year, but this is going to be my next couple weeks project and I will probably take it with me to my in-laws over the holidays um, because it's a great thing to work on. I can work on this while working on puzzles. I have the pattern memorized at this point. Um, it's just two slightly different sections of repeats to create kind of the staggered honeycomb pattern. Um, but it's really pretty simple and so I might take that with me and try and finish that up. I would love to have this finished and all the yarn consumed because that would be seven skeins out of stash and that's well over 1400 yards. That's going to be 14, 15, 16, 1750 out of stash so that would be lovely um but I just don't know if that's really um a feasible thing by the end of the year um regardless I am like I said I'm on the path to like pick up some things finish some things move on and um, I'm really really pleased about that so that is my progress on this blanket again it kind of looks the same from week to week so I don't want to spend too much time on it but I am working on it and adding several stripes a week I think I added one full stripe repeat this week so um I was pretty pleased with that. So I did want to show you two things that I'm going to be casting on this week. One I want to show you because I don't think you're going to get to see it again because it was kind of a, um, I don't want to say an urgent request, but kind of an urgent request. And if I finish it and block it, I'm going to mail it off to its recipient. So um, you will not see it again. Um, I received a message from my sister yesterday who said um, she has a lovely friend from college who I have met. Her lovely friend's name is Anne. We'll just go there. I won't include any other names. Anne's sister was recently diagnosed with cancer and is going through chemotherapy and is about to lose her hair. 
and Beth said to me, would you be, Beth is my sister, sorry. <laughs> my sister said, her favorite color is hot pink. Would you be willing to knit her a really soft, squishy hat? Um, because she's about to lose her hair and it's the cold months. Um, and of course I said yes, because that is, um, you know, I once said to my sister when we were talking about something happening to a friend of ours, um, bad things happen in the world and I don't really know what to do, but I do know how to knit. Um, and so that's kind of my philosophy on lots of things. I can't make lots of things better. I certainly um, can't make the holiday season better um, for this friend of ours. But what I can do is I can knit a warm hat to hopefully keep her um, warm throughout the winter and um, make losing her hair not as terrible as it could be. Um, and I realize that's a that's that sounds like such a minimization of it because it is terrible. Um, but I just I want to do something. And so my sister said, um, do you have any hot pink super soft yarn? And I was like, oh, huh, I, I actually don't. So I used it as, a, as an excuse to go up to my yarn store yesterday. I was very happy to go patronize my local yarn store, which is Yarn Social in Kansas City. Um, and I don't get to go um, chat with them. Sorry, I just got emotional for a minute. Um, I don't get to go chat with them. And it's not even someone that I know, but just the thought of it all this season. Um, I went up there and went looking and I found a variety of things in the store and I texted my sister and I said, when you say hot pink, do you mean neon pink or do you mean magenta? Because there is a definite difference between the two. And I lined up a couple different skeins in the shop, one of which was a kind of bright screaming pink and the others were like various shades of magenta and pink. Um, and what came back was that this was the one that she and Anne preferred. Um, and Anne said that one is perfect for her. So this is a skein of Hedgehog Fibers Air and Weight. It is 100% merino wool. It is um, really, really squishy. Um, and it is her Air and Weight. It is in the colorway Flamingo, um, which it is just a bright, super saturated pink. So um, I don't know if this is 100% soft enough. Um, I did go back to some references and conversation. I know a lot of people have suggested cotton. A lot of people have suggested um, even cotton acrylic blends because they're super soft. Some people find wool itchy. Um, this feels pretty soft to me, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to knit up an Aran Waite hat and then I'm going to find my absolute softest 100% superwash merino sock yarn um, because I have a few skeins that you know those skeins. They feel so soft. They feel almost like cashmere or butter and um, you you think oh goodness I cannot possibly put these on my feet and actually when I went looking for this um, I was actually looking for the hedgehog fiber sock blend because their 100% superwash merino sock blend is so amazingly soft and they just didn't have any in the bright colors but I think I have a half skein somewhere from something else I've made so um, I'm going to use that to line this hat I'm just gonna knit like a real super soft lining um, just pick up on the inside of the brim and knit that so I will definitely share pictures on my Instagram when I finish, but I just don't know if I finish this one this week, I'm going to get it out to her right away because if she is um, losing her hair like any day now, I want to get her something that is warm and cozy. So that is what I'm going to be working on this week. It was unexpected, but it is a wonderful cause. And um, honestly, I am always open to um, knitting hats for those who um, could use something bright um, and some... Um, some pick me up when something bad happens. Not that I wish anything for bad to happen to anyone, but um, if there's anything that I can do to help, I am always, always up for that. So the second cast on is um, very much less emotional. The second cast on is for a knit along that I am helping lead for Zen Yarn Garden. It is not my pattern. Um, it is a pattern called the Zen Zip Tea. And let me see if I have, I do have it. Um, it is for a tea. Um, it's a short sleeved tee and it's got a really interesting um, panel at the front, at the sides, and then also at the back. This tee is constructed sideways. You actually start at the center of the back and you work your way around to the front and then you go back to where you started at the back and you work your way around to the front again and then you join the two fronts together um, with a technique called the, uh, well, it's Suzanne Nielsen's design. So it, she called it the Zan Zip. Um, and so she's calling this the Zen Zip tee because she used Zen Yard Garden. And the reason she designed the she designed the specific tee to work with a specific put up of Zen Yarn Garden yarn, and so I just wanted to show you this. Um, they have these fun um, colorways 
where they've created a couple different colorways and then kind of mixed them together and made speckles and variegated and um, they sell them in groups of three. They are in mini skeins which are um, 25 grams and 100 yards and so this is the set that I am working with here and as you can see I have kind of this bright orange red colorway which I think is called diving and then the middle one is a combination of diving and goggles and I think goggles was um, purple and green so the middle one is purple and green and orange and a little bit of red and then the final one is a speckled version of all of those colors. So um, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm probably gonna put the variegated one in the center um, because that one just looks really fun and um, it reminds me of Halloween and just gives me like total fall vibes and I'm really really I think I'm gonna dig that one and then I think I'm gonna put the speckled one at the back because it's just gonna be less seen and then I think I'm gonna use the red and orange um, at the side panels and at the arms and then um, in the pattern she actually used a natural colorway to knit the tee but I am going to knit it with um, midnight black so this is going to become um, a fall tee um, and I the, I decided to use the midnight black rather than the natural color because when I put the natural color up against these it looked very very um, white and a little bit off of what the the background of these is the natural color but because of the speckling there's lots of like um, kind of plummy like a little bit of lemon and um, a little bit of peach and there are so many other colors in these that against the white I think it just looked like too stark a contrast. It is going to be a stark contrast with the black but I'm just I'm totally digging the red and um, orange next to the black for the sleeves and then having like a fall themed patch down the middle. So I am going to be working on this um, in the next several weeks. The uh, It's not too late to join the knit along, although we did have our first session last night. Um, the way Zen Yarn Garden does their knit alongs is you can purchase a kit where you get the pattern and the yarn. If you want to use your, um, if you want to just purchase the pattern, the pattern is available on Ravelry and you could use your own yarn, although the calculations are based on using these specific yarns and, and really built around this set for the panels. Um, the sweater is completely customizable. Um, like I said, it is knit sideways and through the use of short rows and adding additional rows, you can make it as wide or um, if you want to make it a little bit longer, you can make it long as well. Um, but you can you can build in some customization, particularly if your bust is larger or smaller than your hips and if you have um, a very distinct waistline. I happen to not. All of my measurements are within an inch or two of each other. Um, but if you have a really distinct waistline, you can also use short row shaping to kind of build that in there. Um, so you can also purchase the knit along um, and that gets you access to several Zoom sessions with Suzanne and myself. We had our first one last night and we have two more in January. Um, and so if that is something you're interested in, go ahead and check out zenyarngarden.com, the Zen Zip Tea. I do not get... Um, just to be clear, I work as a contractor for Zen Yarn Garden. I am paid for my time. Um, when I knit samples for them and when I teach for them. Um, I also often receive, if I'm teaching a class, I do receive the samples to make the item in the class for free. So for instance, I received that blanket kit for free. I did receive these items for free. I do not receive any kind of commission related to um, anyone signing up for it. So um, you... I am not doing this as an affiliate um, or there's no there's no hidden anything here. Um, like I said, I do work with them as a contractor. I love working with them. I am excited to knit, um, knit items in their products um, and they do pay me for those services. But um, I, I do not get any particular kickbacks or or any kind of compensation based on whether or not you want to knit their items or purchase their yarn or any of those kinds of things. So I do talk about them as review products, um, but they are not a sponsor of the podcast and that is not a thing that's happening. So just to make that very clear about what I do for Zen Yarn Garden. So that is the other thing that I will be casting on. I've taken my measurements um, and I need to work on that before our session in January. So that is gonna be another project that I will be working on this month. I didn't really intend to cast on anything else this month, um, but I kind of forgot about this one. <laughs> And so now I need to at least start working on it and hopefully it will not become an abandoned whip like this blanket did because this blanket was a knit along from earlier this year. Hopefully I will be able to kind of rip through this this month and then January um, and stay current on things. 
So that is mostly it for the knitting content. Um, because I went to the yarn store this week, and like I said, I wanted to show you that yarn and talk a little bit about it. I also wanted to talk about something else that I picked up while I was at the yarn store and as it relates to knitting. So, and in general, I don't share my haul or any of those kinds of things. I want to share these things with you because I think they're interesting. And it's also something new that I'm gonna try. So um, those of you who have been with me for a long time have probably seen me wear this sweater. This is the Climbing Vines Pullover, and it was out of either a 2007 or a 2009 issue of um, Interweave Knits. It was the cover piece, and the model was um, really stunning. She was uh, black, and she was wearing uh, this sweater in a very kind of pale pink colorway, um, like a dusty pink, and it was absolutely stunning. Um, I made the pattern basically as written, and I say basically as written because this was still in the early days of my knitting. I made this in 2010 um, for the, back in the day, the Ravolympics. Um, I made this sweater as one of my very early sweaters, and the reason I say I made it basically as written is because I followed the pattern exactly, and that was before I knew that if I knit the chart from, um, from right to left as opposed to left to right, and if I followed the instructions as written but I knit them backwards, my panel would be on the opposite side of the sweater. So technically, if you look for the pattern, the, um, the uh, panel is on this side of the sweater. So many of you remember this, um, or you have seen me wear this. It is a super comfy sweater. I knit it in Kathmandu Erin, which I don't believe is still available. Um, it's Queensland Kathmandu. They still have like the DK, they might have the worsted weight, but they did away with the Erin weight. And I did it in this great teal, which is kind of a flecked tweedy colorway. I don't know how much you can see, but it's got green flecks and white flecks and a bunch of other things. And it has worn very well. It does not pill that much. I mean, you can see a little bit of pilling, but um, it has worn super super well and I absolutely love this sweater. It has grown a little bit over the years so it's a little bit oversized now. I could probably wash it and maybe shrink it back up um, but this is my favorite like cozy in the winter run around the house sweater and I totally wear it outside too. It is just lovely um, and the last time I was wearing it I discovered it had a hole in it and I am not sure if um, the hole got there because of bugs. I, I carefully inspected the sweater at the time and I found no other holes anywhere in the sweater. And usually if it's bugs, there's gonna be more than one hole. Um, and it is generally stored in a cedar chest of drawers. However, the drawers are really, really full. And so sometimes um, the sweater, when I put a sweater away, sometimes it does rub in the drawer. So I'm wondering if maybe it just got caught in the drawer or rubbed or snapped. Um, but there is a small hole and I will show you. It is right here next to the, you can see it right there. So um, it is still a very tiny hole. And when I saw it, noticed it, I immediately took the sweater off and set it aside. And this was probably a few weeks ago. Um, and I tried to think about what I wanted to do. Um, like I said, I knit this sweater over 10 years ago. So this is, this is a sweater I knit in 2010. It's now the end of 2022. I knit it probably in the, well, I knit it in the Winter Olympics of 2010, which were likely in January and February. So it is basically almost 13 years old now. And I have worn the snot out of it. So I thought about it and I realized I likely do not have any more of this yarn anywhere. I'm sure I kept a ball for a while. It could be in some random bucket with a bunch of leftovers, but I don't think I have any more because in those days I pretty much used up all my scraps and I didn't think about this that much. So I tried to decide what it was that I wanted to do. I could definitely kind of pull all the ends through and tie them off and try and um, fix it because again, it is a very small hole and you might be able to see, um, it looks like the yarn is snapped. There are a few extra sections, you know, there are a few little bits in there, but, but like I said, it's still small. So I wanted to do something while I could. About a week later, my local yarn store posted that they were gonna be holding a felting class and that they had all kinds of little felting supplies from, um, it is called Felted Sky. They are a beautiful studio that they specialize in felting. And I have actually met them at a couple conferences and we 
well, we tried to pitch them to do the marketing services for a little bit. Um, and they, um, they make these lovely kits. The big thing that I really love is they make these felted landscapes where basically they give you all the supplies um, and you can put together, it ends up looking like an embroidery hoop, but it is like a, um, it almost looks like a painting the way they felt together all the colors, like sunsets and just all kinds of fun designs. Um, but my local yarn store um, advertised that they had some supplies and that they were gonna be doing a felting class. And when I looked at the felting class, it looked a little bit more like they were gonna felt um, small animals and creatures, like like um, building kind of toys or small felted things. And so I didn't sign up for the class and as it turns out, they ended up doing mending. So I totally should have gone. But since I was up at the, at the local yarn store, I decided to buy a few supplies. So one of the things that I considered as I was trying to mend this sweater is, first of all, it is, um, it is more or less right in the center of the front of the sweater. So, um, you know, we're looking like right here. So it is right on my stomach. It's not an area I really want to emphasize and it's right in the middle of the sweater. So um, I was trying to decide whether I wanted to go like kind of camouflage, whether I wanted to, it to almost not even look like a repair or have someone um, have a hard time finding the repair or conversely, if I needed to um, make it look like a design element and could I do something floral or something fun here that would kind of tie into the vine design. Well, the decision was made for me because I walked into the store yesterday to look for some felting supplies and I found this is a needle felting wool color 1602. It's called Mountain Lock. It's a bunch of different colors um, and this little bit is, um, it's an eighth of an ounce. So it's just, it's a very, very tiny bit, just enough for a little bit of felting. And um, this, uh, this was $2 and this is the colorway. So as you can see, that looks really, really fairly close to the yarn. It looks a little bit off in um, the video, but I really think when I spread out a little bit of this batting over the hole and then I needle felt it from both sides, it is basically gonna kind of disappear. So there is gonna be a little bit of a loss of stitch texture there, um, but I think this is gonna be kind of almost a perfect match. And I ended up buying two because for $2, um, you know, small, <laughs> small, um, uh, my mom used to call them cheap thrills, you know, um, and that way I would have another one because I will tell you that I feel like um, the elbow patches on this sweater are kind of, the elbows are getting a little thin. And so I can't decide if what I want to do is go ahead and spread it out and kind of do a felted um, elbow patch or if maybe I want to get a different color because um, I could look and see if they had like a darker green or something for the elbow patches and make it almost a little um, like grandfather cardigan-ish. Anyway, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to watch some videos and then I'm going to repair the hole. And I bought two other tools while I was there. Um, so the whole the whole thing is fairly inexpensive. Like I said, I paid two dollars each for these. Um, the two other supplies that I went and got is I got a felter foam mat, um, which basically I probably could have bought foam at any Michaels, but they had this little bit right there, and this was seven dollars. It's a five by five foam mat from Felted Sky. Um, so I went ahead and purchased that. And then the other thing that I purchased is I purchased a felting needle. Now felting needles um, are needle felting needles are kind of dangerous because what they are is they are a hook with all kinds of barbs and um let me see huh you know what I do not know how to use this I'm gonna go have to look at the oh hold on felting needle is very sharp store in a safe place that's what I was going to tell you um but what I can't okay I need to learn how to use this um, with the sharp end inserted into the handle correctly. Yeah, so this is, I'm going to have to figure this out. I will get back to you. Um, the deal with a felting needle is that it is a needle with a whole bunch of tiny barbed tips because what you are doing when you are felting is you are locking all those fibers in together. Um, so you are taking the fibers in that little bat and you are locking them to the fibers beneath and creating kind of a sturdy um, matted, you're looking for the matted texture because that is what you are trying to achieve. If you have ever put your, um, if you've ever put a sweater in the dryer and it has felted and it has gotten really um, kind of compacted and um, feels almost like a pot holder or some other um, some other uh, 
you know, like really um, matted texture. That is exactly what I'm going for on a very tiny portion of this garment. And so what I am going to do, I need to read the instructions, but I believe I'm going to do a little bit on the outside and then also a little bit on the inside. So basically the area where the stitches are broken will be buffeted in between two layers of fiber. Um, and I'm going to put that little bit right on this block and then I'm going to hit it with the barbed needle a whole bunch of times. And that is going to create my sweater repair. So again, like I said, I don't normally talk about haul and things that I buy, but I thought it would be interesting. And next week I hope to show you um, my repaired sweater and I'll talk a little bit about the process. Um, I don't foresee myself really becoming a huge needle felter, um, but I do feel like it is a useful thing to have, particularly for mending. And I have all little kinds of bips. I have all kinds of little bits and bobs of fiber around the house because I spin. So if I need to repair sweaters in the future with something like this technique, I feel like owning, you know, the foam, the foam mat and the needle will be very helpful as a small set of tools. And together, I think the needle was $5. No, the needle was $12 and the felting block was um, seven. So that's $19 for tools that I can use to repair sweaters. So, um, and socks and pretty much anything else I would want to. So um, that is kind of an adventure I will be going on in the next couple weeks. It shouldn't take too long, but I wanted to talk to you a little bit about it so that I can report back. So the final thing I will show you is a spin that I just finished. I literally just finished it last night. So it needs a bath and, um, a good soaking, thwacking, and drying. But this is the sock yarn that I spun up. This is Thorn Apple. It is a colorway from Hello Yarn. It was one of her club fibers. And it is Corydale, on Corydale. And I have told you before, I really, really love Corydale for socks. You're probably sick of hearing it if you watch this podcast a lot. Corydale is um, not as soft as Merino, so it's not super soft. Um, it is a little bit crisper and a little bit more sturdy. Um, and it also doesn't have as much um, shrink or poof factor. So what what that actually means is that the um, the fibers themselves have a little bit less crimp. So um, with merino, which are short stapled fibers, and tarhi and rambouillet, those all the fibers are really really crimpy. So when you spin it, um, when you wash it, it kind of plumps up, and you lose a little bit of length, and you gain it in squishiness. Um, Corydell is much more of a medium fiber. Um, it is not scratchy, and that is one of the reasons that I really really like it for socks. Um, I find that harder, more durable wearing yarns, more of the medium and long stapled yarns, are really itchy to me, um, and so. Um, I can always tell if uh, like I can't wear Shetland. If I knit Shetland socks, I'm fine knitting the socks, but then after I wear them for a few hours, my ankles start to itch. <laughs> And it's really uncomfortable. So um, Coriel is one of those like good in between. It's like a mid-length staple fiber and um, it is soft enough that it does not make my ankles itch and it is sturdy enough that it stands up to a good wearing and they wear really well as socks, um, particularly if you think about um, like sport weight socks, kind of boot socks, um, socks to keep you warm during the cold weather. A lot of times I wear them basically like slippers in my house. Um, and so Thorn Apple is kind of a dark rainbow. It definitely is um, has a um, emphasis on the blue, but you can also see that there's like pinks and purples and yellows and some of the other colors in there. And to me, it looks like a an overwashed kind of um, with with black or dark purple rainbow. Um, and so it's not perfect right now. It definitely needs a good washing. I will take some nice photos. This will be up in the shop. I normally um, tend to hoard a lot of Corydale for myself and I do love this skein. It's beautiful, but I have quite a few skeins that I have not yet knit into socks. Um, and so this one I'm gonna go ahead and put into my shop. I don't have the fiber that I am currently spinning um, on the wheel with me. It is a, um, a colorway from Hello Yarn that I bought last year. It is reds and greens and golds. I think I showed it in a previous podcast. Um, and when I saw it, even though it was not Christmas themed, um, I immediately said, ooh, that's what I want my Christmas socks to be this year. So I am working on that one so that I can spin it for my Christmas socks this year. Hopefully Hopefully I'll finish that this week and maybe I'll have time to crank out one more skein before Christmas. Um, but I will keep you, uh, keep you updated as I work through those things. So today's podcast was a little bit longer than usual, but I thank you for sitting with me through it. I hope that you are having a good week so far. I know it's only Monday um, and that you have a lovely week ahead. And until I see you next time, I will say, as I always do, happy knitting, happy spinning, happy sipping. And I'll see you next time. Bye.